Anishinaabe, Wikipedia article audio. Anishinaabe is the autonym for a group of culturally related indigenous peoples in Canada and the United States that include the Odawa, Ojibwe, Potawatomi, Aji Cree, Mississaugas, Chippewa, and Algonquin peoples. The Anishinaabeg speak Anishinaabemowin, or Anishinaabe languages that belong to the Algonquian language family. They traditionally have lived in the northeast woodlands and subarctic. The word Anishinaabeg translates to people from whence lowered. Another definition refers to the good humans, meaning those who are on the right road or path given to them by the creator Gitchi Manitou, or Great Spirit. The Ojibwe historian, linguist, and author Basil Johnston wrote that its literal translation is beings made out of nothing or spontaneous beings, since Anishinaabeg myths claim they were created by divine breath. Name Origins Anishinaabe is often mistakenly considered a synonym of Ojibwe, however, it refers to a much larger group of tribes. Anishinaabe has many different spellings. Different spelling systems may indicate vowel length or spell certain consonants differently, meanwhile, variants ending in, e.g. slash ek come from an Algonquian plural, while those ending in an, e come from an Algonquian singular. The name Anishinaabe is shortened to Nishnabe, mostly by Odawa people. The cognate Neshnaba copyright comes from the Potawatomi, a people long allied with the Odawa and Ojibwe in the Council of Three Fires. The Nipissing, Mississaugas, and Algonquin are identified as an Ashinabi, but are not part of the Council of Three Fires. Closely related to the Ojibwe and speaking a language mutually intelligible with an Ashinabamoan are the Aji Cree. Their most common autonym is an Ashinani and they call their language an Ashinani Amoan. Among the Anishinaabeg, the Ojibwe collectively call the Nipissings and the Algonquins Odishkwaigamii, while those among the Nipissings who identify themselves as Algonquins call the Algonquins proper Oma Miwinini. Clans Not all Anishinaabamoan speakers call themselves an Ashinaabeg. The Ojibwe people who moved to what are now the Prairie Provinces of Canada call themselves Nikawa and call their branch of the Anishinaabe language Nikawa Moan. Particular Anishinaabe groups have different names from region to region. According to Anishinaabe tradition, and from records of Weigwa Asabuk, the people migrated from the eastern areas of North America, and from along the east coast. In old stories, the homeland was called Turtle Island. This comes from the idea that the universe, the Earth, or the continent of North America are all sometimes understood as being the back of a great turtle, a mysterious natural consciousness. The Anishinaabe oral history considers the Anishinaabe peoples as descendants of the Abenaki people and refers to them as the fathers. Another Anishinaabe oral history considers the Abenaki as descendants of the Lenape, thus refers to them as grandfathers. However, Cree oral traditions generally consider the Anishinaabe as their descendants, and not the Abenakis. Historical relations between the Anishinaabe and other indigenous groups a number of complementary origin concepts exist within the oral traditions of the Anishinaabe. According to the oral history, seven great magus appeared to the Anishinaabe peoples in the Waabanakiing to teach the people about the midwiven lifestyle. One great magus was too spiritually powerful and would kill people in the Waabanakiing whenever they were in its presence. This being later returned to the depths of the ocean leaving the six great magus to teach the people. The Anishinaabe are one of the first nations in Canada. Each of the six magus established separate dudum for the people. Of these dudum, five clan systems appeared. 
Historical Relations Between the Anishinaabeg and European Settlers After founding the Dudum, the Six Magus returned to the depths of the ocean as well. Some oral histories surmise that if the Seventh Magus had stayed, it would have established the Anamiki Thunderbird Dudum. French Colonialists The powerful Magus returned in a vision relating a prophecy to the people. It said that the Anishinaabeg needed to move west to keep their traditional ways alive, because of the many new settlements and people not of Anishinaabe blood who would soon arrive. The migration path of the Anishinaabe peoples would become a series of smaller turtle islands, confirmed by the Magus shells. After receiving assurance from their allied brothers and father of their safety in crossing other tribal territory, the Anishinaabeg moved inland. They advanced along the St. Lawrence River to the Ottawa River and through to Lake Nipissing, and then to the Great Lakes. British Colonialists The first of these smaller turtle islands was Muniya, where Muniya now stands. Here the Anishinaabeg divided into two groups, one that travelled up and settled along the Ottawa River, and the core group who proceeded to the second stopping place near Niagara Falls. By the time the Anishinaabeg established their third stopping place near the present city of Detroit, the Anishinaabeg had divided into six distinct nations, Algonquin, Nipissing, Mississauga, Ojibwe, Odawa, and Potawatomi. While the Odawa established their long-held cultural center on Manitoulin Island, the Ojibwe established their center in the Salt Ste. Marie region of Ontario, Canada. With expansion of trade with the French and later the British, fostered by availability of European small arms, members of the Council of Three Fires expanded southward to the Ohio River, southwestward along the Illinois River, and westward along Lake Superior, Lake of the Woods and the Northern Great Plains. In their western expansion, the Ojibwe again divided, forming the Salto, the seventh major branch of the Anishinaabeg. United States As the Anishinaabeg moved inland, through both alliances and conquest, they incorporated various other closely related Algonquian peoples into the Anishinaabe nation. These included, but were not limited to, the Noke and Mandui. Other incorporated groups can generally be identified by the individual's Dudum. Majizi Dudum generally identifies those whose ancestors were from the area of the present-day United States and Maingan Dudum as Santisu. Other Anishinaabe Dudum thought to have migrated out of the core Anishinaabe groupings, such as the Nibianabe Dudum, which is now the water spirit clan of the Winnebago or Ho-Chunk. Anishinaabe peoples now reside throughout North America, in both the northern United States and southern Canada, chiefly around the Great Lakes and Lake Winnipeg. After this migration and the immigration of European newcomers to North America, many Anishinaabe tribe chiefs were coerced into signing Treaty Sa Euro in a language they did not speak nor could read a Euro with the governments of the Dominion of Canada and the United States. Treaty 3 in Canada was signed in 1873 between the Anishinaabe people west of the Great Lakes and the Government of Canada. Through other treaties and resulting relocations, some Anishinaabeg now reside in the states of Kansas, Oklahoma, South Dakota, and Montana in the United States, and the provinces of Saskatchewan, Alberta, and British Columbia in Canada. Historically, the Anishinaabe peoples maintained close alliances with Cree groups, including the Atakamiku, Montagne, Moose Cree, Swampy Cree, and Plains Cree. Other close allies included the Noos, Majamag, Niyananada, Omanumanayag, Wianibiagug and Zawanug. 
Other closely related Algonquin groups such as the Xiaoxiguan and Amiqua were incorporated into the Anishinaabe peoplehood through alliances. Due to competing interests, from time to time the Anishinaabe had strained relations with the various Iroquois nations, Sauk, Fox, and Dakota peoples. Relations today between the Anishinaabe and their neighbors. The first of the Anishinaabe to encounter European settlers were those of the Three Fires Confederation, within the states of Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Ohio, and Pennsylvania in the territory of the present day United States, and southern Ontario and Quebec of Canada. Although there were many peaceful interactions between the Anishinaabe and the European settlers, there were also times of turmoil and war. Warfare cost many lives on both sides. Other Indigenous Groups The Anishinaabe dealt with Europeans through the fur trade, intermarriage, and performance as allies. Europeans traded with the Anishinaabe for their furs in exchange for goods, and also hired the men as guides throughout the lands of North America. The Anishinaabe women began to intermarry with fur traders and trappers. Some of their descendants would later create a Ma copyrightis ethnic group. Explorers, trappers, and other European workers married or had unions with other Anishinaabe women and their descendants tended to form a Ma copyrightist culture. Cultural and language preservation or revitalization, full and independent federal recognition, some Anishinaabe communities are recognized by county or state governments, or are recognized by the federal government only as part of another tribe, band government is not always looked on as legitimate by the communities it claims to represent. This is because the original band council system was imposed by the U.S. and Canadian federal government as a pseudo-representative conciliatory puppet system, that complemented the supposed protectorate of the reservation. In many cases despite its inherent drawbacks the people have successfully used the band council system at times to forward the well-being of the community. At other times, the band council system has been used as an insider trading house where federal governments and corporate partners manipulate deals that have the appearance of legitimacy, when in fact they have only persuaded members of a momentarily non-representative band council. One major discrepancy between the band council system and older systems of governance is the imposed presence of a chief. European colonists when encountering sachems erroneously believed they were encountering village or community headmen. This historical error has had devastating effects for the formulation of local governance as many of the people themselves have come to believe that older systems of governance were hierarchical when in fact they were purely horizontal in power distribution between individuals, treaty rights, traditional means of support establishment of reservations or upholding of the reservation boundaries per treaties and their amendments, personal health, diabetes and asthma affect many Anishinaabe. Communities at a rate higher than the general population, and, mistrust of the mainstream medicine, non-consensual sterilization practiced in the Indian Health Service or IHS in the U.S., among other shortcomings and abuses has compromised the relationship between Anishinaabe and practitioners of mainstream medicine. Mainstream medicine is still used, but oftentimes with great reluctance and caution, relationship with law enforcement, since its inception, the reservation system has been accompanied by oftentimes severe police brutality and a systematized effort to use the prison system to silence and terrorize Anishinaabe. Even in some cases where police may be hired by the band council, brutality persists. This is often due to the aforementioned nebulousness of band council relevance, and the band council's sometimes penchant for corruption. Anishinaabe communities constantly face having to make legal and policy reforms to address problems of this nature, social disparity, 
many in Ashinabeg suffer poor education, high unemployment, substance abuse slash addiction and domestic violence at rates higher than the general population. These are symptomatic social characteristics of reflected in nearly all communities that suffer long occupations by foreign armies. The earliest Europeans to encounter native peoples in the Great Lakes area were the French voyagers. These men were professional canoe paddlers who transported furs and other merchandise over long distances in the lake and river system of Northern America. Such explorers gave French names to many places in present-day Minnesota, Michigan, and Wisconsin. The French were mainly trappers and traders rather than settlers. So in general they got along with the native peoples much better than the English did, who often were settlers and took the land from the native inhabitants of the country. Much more often French people intermarried with American native women. The ethnic identities of the Ojibwe, Odawa, and Potawatomi did not develop until after the Anishinaabeg reached Michilimackinac on their journey westward from the Atlantic coast. Using the Midwiven scrolls, Potawatomi elder Shupshawana dated the formation of the Council of Three Fires to 796 AD at Michilimackinac. In this council, the Ojibwe were addressed as the older brother, the Odawa as the middle brother, and the Potawatomi as the younger brother. Consequently, when the three Anishinaabe nations are mentioned in this specific order, Ojibwe, Odawa, and Potawatomi, it implies the Council of Three Fires as well. Each tribe had different functions, the Ojibwe were the keepers of the faith, the Odawa the keepers of trade, and the Potawatomi are the keepers slash maintainers of slash for the fire. This was the basis for their exonyms of Budwaatama I or Boda Copyright Wadmai. Canada United States II Education The Ottawa are a Native American and First Nations people. Ojibwe, Ojibwe, Chippewa is the third most commonly spoken native language in Canada, and the fourth most spoken in North America. Potawatomi is a central Algonquian language. It is spoken around the Great Lakes in Michigan and Wisconsin as well as in Kansas in the United States. In southern Ontario in Canada, it is spoken by fewer than 50 people. Though the three fires had several meeting places, they preferred Michilimackinac due to its central location. The council met for military and political purposes. The council maintained relations with other nations, both fellow and Ashinabeg the Ozagiai, Otagamiai, Omanumanai, and Nananishinabeg, Wianibiagu, Nada, Niyananada, Nada Nzi, Wemadiguji, Zaganashi, and the Jishimukaman. After the Europeans came into the country, the French built Fort Michilimackinac in the 18th century. After the Seven Years' War, the victorious English took over the fort, also using it as a trading post. Through the totem system and promotion of trade, the council generally had a peaceful existence with its neighbors. However, occasional unresolved disputes erupted into wars. The council notably fought against the Iroquois Confederacy and the Sioux. During the Seven Years' War, the council fought with France and against England, as it had long-standing trade relationships with the French. Conventional war however was a European import, complete with its signature of high casualty, cruelty, and focus on resource acquisition. Ceremonial warfare that was the predominant mode prior to European contact parallels older forms of European chivalry, where combatants met oftentimes one-on-one -on -one honor bouts. These matches did not always end in casualties and they had no component of political or material gain attached. Later, 
the Anishinaabeg established a relationship with the British similar to that they had with the French. They formed the Three Fires Confederation in reaction to conflict with encroaching settlers and continuing tensions with the British Canadian government, as well as that of the new United States after it established independence at the end of the 18th century. The letters of Colonel Henry Bouquet and Geoffrey Amherst of the British Army reveal a plan to eliminate Anishinaabe people through the intentional distribution of smallpox-infected materials at Fort Pitt circa 1763. Peter Harstead's article Sickness and Disease on the Wisconsin Frontier chronicles similar efforts made by Americans. In the later case a cask of liquor was wrapped in an American flag. Instructions were given that this gift not be opened until the Anishinaabe people present had returned to their home communities. Opening the gift early at FO and Dulac people began to get sick and one who had seen the disease before in Montreal recognized it as smallpox. The Three Fires Confederacy had conflict with the new United States after the American Revolution, as settlers kept encroaching on their territory. The council became the core member of the Western Lakes Confederacy, made up of the Wyandotte, Algonquin, Nipissing, Sac, Mesquake and other peoples. During the Northwest Indian War and the War of 1812, the Three Fires Confederacy fought against the United States. Many Anishinaabe refugees from the Revolutionary War, particularly Odawa and Potawatomi, migrated north to British-held areas. Those who remained east of the Mississippi River were subjected to the 1,830 Indian removal policy of the United States, among the Anishinaabeg, the Potawatomi were most affected. The Odawa had been removed from the settlers' paths, so only a handful of communities experienced removal. For the Ojibwe removal attempts culminated in the Sandy Lake tragedy and several hundred deaths. The Potawatomi avoided removal only by escaping into Ojibwe-held areas and hiding from U.S. officials. Notes William Whipple Warren, a United States man of mixed Ojibwe and European descent, became an interpreter, assistant to a trader to the Ojibwe and legislator of the Minnesota Territory. A gifted storyteller and historian, he collected native accounts and wrote the history of the Ojibwe people, based upon traditions and oral statements, first published by the Minnesota Historical Society in 1885, some 32 years after his early death from tuberculosis. Given his Anglo-American father, Lyman Marcus Warren, an American education, the Ojibwe of the time did not consider Warren as one of them. However, they retained friendly relations with him and considered him as a half-brother due to his extensive knowledge of the Ojibwe language and culture and the fact that he had Ojibwe ancestry through his mixed Ojibwe French mother, Marie Cadot. His work covered much of the culture and history of the Ojibwe, gathered from stories of the nation. Warren identified the Crane and Loon clans as the two chief clans among his mother's Anishinaabe people. Crane clan was responsible for external governmental relationships, and Loon clan was responsible for internal governance relationships. Warren believed that the British and United States governments had deliberately destroyed the clan system, or the polity of governance, when they forced indigenous nations to adopt representative government and direct elections of chiefs. Further, he believed such destruction led to many wars among the Anishinaabe. He also cited the experiences of other native nations in the U.S. His work in its entirety demonstrated the significance of the clan system. After the Sandy Lake tragedy, the government changed its policy to relocating tribes onto reservations, often by consolidating groups of communities. 
conflict continued through the 19th century, as Native Americans and the United States had different goals. After the Dakota War of 1862, many Anishinaabe communities in Minnesota were relocated and further consolidated. There are many Anishinaabe reserves and reservations, in some places the Anishinaabe share some of their lands with others, such as the Cree, the Dakota, Delaware, and the Kickapoo, among others. The Anishinaabe who merged with the Kickapoo tribe may now identify as being Kickapoo in Kansas and Oklahoma. The Prairie Potawatomi were the Ojibwe, Odawa, and Potawatomi of Illinois and Wisconsin who were relocated to Kansas during the 19th century. The Anishinaabe of Manitoba, particularly those along the east side of Lake Winnipeg, have had long-standing historical conflicts with the Cree people. In addition to other issues shared by First Nations recognized by the Canadian government and other Aboriginal peoples in Canada, the Anishinaabe of Manitoba, Ontario, and Quebec have opposed the Energy East Pipeline of Enbridge. The Chippewa of Thames First Nation legally challenged the right of Ottawa to hold a pipeline hearing without their consent. The project is also opposed by Ottawa River River Keepers and was the basis of a June 2015 declaration of reclaimed sovereignty over the Ottawa River Valley by several Anishinaabe peoples. The relationship between the various Anishinaabe communities and the United States government has been steadily improving since the passage of the Indian Reorganization Act. Several Anishinaabe communities still experience tensions with the state governments, county governments, and with non-Native American individuals and their groups. In contemporary times, the Anishinaabe have worked to renew the clan system as a model for self-governance. They have drawn from the work of Ojibwe educator Edward Benton Benai, who emphasizes education based on one's own culture. They believe using the clan system will also be a basis of cultural and political revitalization of the people. Clan originally meant extended family. In this system originally clans were represented by a changing cast of spokespeople at yearly meetings. In more recent times, clans have come to align personality characteristics with the animals that represent them. This shifts the focus from extended family governance to groups of people who have a particular kind of strength to offer to the community. For example, the Deer clan is sometimes understood as having direction of hospitality toward visitors, whereas the Crane clan or Eagle clan, depending on region, may be aligned with leadership qualities. Conversations surrounding how to change current systems of governance to better match how the people governed themselves over millennia is always occurring throughout Anishinaabeaki. Major issues facing the various Anishinaabe communities are In June 1994, the chiefs at the Anishinaabe Grand Council gathering at Rocky Bay First Nation, directed that the Education Directorate formally established the Anishinaabe Education Institute in accordance with the post-secondary education model that was submitted and ratified with provisions for satellite campuses and a community-based delivery system. In August 2017 the Anishinaabe Nation in Ontario and the Government of Canada signed an agreement allowing the Anishinaabe Nation to control the classroom curriculum and school resources of its kindergarten to grade 12 education system in 23 communities. Approximately 8% of Anishinaabe students attend schools on reserve. 